So in the today's class, we start with the binary search. This is the second method in searching you are going to study. The binary search can be implemented whenever the elements of the array are in sorted order. It means the elements of the array may be in ascending order or in descending order, then this is the best method to be implemented on that for searching. This method compares the elements to be searched with the middle element of the array. If the searching element is equal to the mid element of the array, then search is successful. You have to note down the position of the element, that is mid. Suppose if the comparison does not match with the element is searched, then we should either search either at the right half of the array or at the left of the array. This is all about the explanatory part. Then to understand this particular concept, first before starting with the algorithm, we'll study about one example. So we'll note down one example here. We'll study on that particular example. We'll discuss, then we'll come back to the algorithm so that easily you can understand the algorithm. See here. Here. Mm. See here. This is an array, right? Contains total nine elements. Its index values are zero to eight. Then the contents of these are one, five, seven, eight, 13, 19, 20, 23, 29. These are the elements of the array. It means all the elements are in ascending order. The elements are in ascending order. That's why we are implementing the binary search for this. So our searching element should be, um, we'll take it as the searching element as 23. The searching element is 23, that is ELE. Now, we'll understand here, the terms what we need is here is the first element of the array, this one is called as low, right, or beginning. Then the last element of the array is called as high or end. Upper, this is also called as lower bond, this is upper bond, right? So, this is beginning, this is end. Now what it states is, once you get the array in an order, then you have to find the middle element. How to find the middle element? You have to use the formula. To find the middle element, the formula used is mid equal to beginning plus end divided by two. Beginning plus end divided by two, right? So beginning plus n divided by two is the formula to find the middle element. Once you know the middle element, then compare your searching element 23 with the middle element. If both are matching, search is successful. Otherwise, you will go for searching either left half of the array or right half of the array. Now in this example, see here. Now, we'll start it here. The first element is one, that is zero, beginning, right? Then last element, last element is 29. 
right? So zero plus eight, zero plus eight here, zero plus eight divided by two to find the middle element. So eight by two, eight by two is four. Four means here, this one, highlighted one, blue color. This is the mid element after calculation. Now, what you have to do is compare the searching element 23 with this mid element. Compare searching element 23. 23 is equal to A of mid. Consider this array is considered as A, right? 23 is equal to A of mid. It means 23 is equal to 13. No. That you are comparing here. A of mid is equal to 13. 23 equal to 13. No. No means what you do? Again, you have to leave this. Now the next searching part, either left half of this or right half of this. That will be decided by one more condition. That is, if the Searching element or the middle element is less than normal. You take it as both the case you can take either you can start with the searching element or the middle element. In this case, we are taking it as in this example 13 is less than 23. It means 13 is the middle element, mid is less than searching element. Either you can follow this or reverse also 23 is less than 13. 23 is less than 13. Not only follow that. The searching element is compared with the middle element. Then we are comparing that. 23 is less than 13. One method, second method is 13 is less than 23. Either of these two conditions you can use it. Then depends on the value of that condition. Either end changes or beginning changes depends on its value, this condition value. In this case, 13 is less than 23. Yes, because our searching element is 23. This is less than that. It means our task is to go towards right half of the array to search our 23. It may exist or may not exist, we don't know. Right? Now, for that, what changes is? If yes means beginning is going to change by mid plus one, mid plus one, that we are writing the beginning equal to mid plus one, right? So beginning is mid plus one means again, we are showing that it here, see, this part, step number two, right? Step number two, this becomes our beginning now, this is end. Again, follow the same step, right? See now, this is our beginning, this is our end. Now follow the same step procedure to find the middle element. The middle element is, that is 5 plus 8. 5 plus 8 is 13 divided by 2, that is equal to 6.5, that is equal to 6. Because we all know that the index value should be always a positive integer because it starts with zero, right? So to convert the middle value into an integer part only, there is no floating points here. So it becomes six. Six is the new mid. Again, compare that. If A of mid equal to, A of mid is 20. Again, compare. If A of mid, that is 20 is equal to 23. Our searching element is 23. 20 equal to 23? No. Again, check the condition. False means again there's a condition. Whether you are to now search towards left half of the array or right half of the array. Right? So for that, again, we are checking condition here. 20 is less than 23. Yes. Yes means again beginning is going to change. That is beginning equal to mid plus 1. Beginning equal to mid plus 1. Right? Then we'll move on to the next step. That is only two elements are left out now. That is Question 7 and 8. Now, again, perform the same procedure. That is, this is the beginning. This is the end. Right? Now, find the middle element. That is 7 
beginning plus 8 and 7 plus 8 is 15, 15 divided by 2 that is 7.5, 7.5 is converted into integer form that is only 7, 7 becomes mate, this is beginning as well as now mate, now compare a of mate that is 23 is equal to such single mate, 23, 23 equal to 23, yes, condition is satisfied, it means the search is successful, now note down yellow is equal to mate, mid value is 7, it means location is 7, it means our searching element 23 is located at position 7, this is the way the binary search works, right? Now we will study about algorithm so that now it is easy for you to understand that algorithm, see here, in the algorithm we are using some terms, right? That is, the terms used in this are, one is beginning, right? Then end is there, then M is mid, right? Then A is the array. In the step one, now set beginning equal to zero, <coughs> end equal to N minus one, these are the locations. Array starts with 0, ends with n minus 1, beginning equal to 0, end equal to n minus 1. Then LOC location is equal to minus 1. Why it is minus 1? In linear search also we took this location, minus 1. Here also location equal to minus 1 because our searching element may exist or may not exist in the given array. That's why we are taking 1 less than the beginning portion, that is 0. LOC is minus 1. The step one is initialize step is over. We have initialized three values here beginning value, end value, and location value. Then the step two to perform the search operation, binary search, what we need is at least we need one element in the array. Then only you can proceed with the binary search. For that, we are putting here one condition with the while loop that is, while beginning is less than or equal to end. If it's, this looping condition is true, then only it starts executing the panel search, right? It means there exists at least one element in the array. So once the beginning is less than or equal to end, then you have to find the middle element. There exists some elements, so you have to start with finding the middle element by using the formula m equal to beginning plus n divided by 2. Is it clear? Now, once you got the mid means you have to compare. if EL, EL is searching element. EL is equal to A of mid. If yes, note down the mid element to location. Mid is assigned to yellow C. Then go to step 3. If it is true, then it go to step 3. Right? Suppose this condition is false, then else will work. That is, if EL is less than A of M, if EL is less than E of M, yes means end is going to change, that is mid minus 1, else, that is if the condition is false means beginning is going to change, that is beginning equal to mid plus 1, right? This process goes on till there exists at least one element. Once you reach the step 3, then we are checking the condition, that is if LOC value is greater than or equal to 0 means it then the print the location, it means the search is successful. Suppose the LOC remains constant, that is initial value only means the condition becomes false, then it goes to else, then the search will be unsuccessful and the process ends with the exit. What you take in that example is, in the example, if you observe that example with this particular algorithm, Right? See here. We will now compare that, this example. See, in this example, order taken, A is array. Right? Then, this is beginning, this is end. Beginning is less than or equal to end. That is, 1 is less than or equal to 8. Yes. Yes means you find the mid. Then you got the mid. Then you have to compare it. Right? We are compared. Both are not matching. 
Thirty-nine, twenty-three. You are taking here. Here you are taking twenty-three. The mid you are getting thirteen. Thirteen is less than or equal to twenty-three. See here. The first condition you can observe here. Twenty-three is equal to thirteen. Twenty-three equal to thirteen. No, no means where it goes? It goes to else. Else means twenty-three is less than thirteen. Twenty-three is less than thirteen. No, no means it goes to else. Else means again beginning is going to change. That is beginning equal to mid plus one. That you have shown it here. Say twenty-three is less than thirteen. No, no means beginning equal to mid plus one. Right? Then we got a new beginning here. That is step number two. Step one is completed. Then again it goes back. It checks the step two. Beginning is less than or equal to end. Yes. Again you have to find the new mid. That is beginning plus end divided by two. The new mid what you get is that is five plus eight. Right. Thirteen. Thirteen divided by two is Six point five. There is nothing but six. See here, twenty now, right? Twenty is the middle element. Now compare again in this algorithm. Twenty-three is equal to twenty. No, no means again it goes to else. Then check the condition. If twenty-three less than twenty, twenty-three less than twenty. No, no means where it goes? Again it goes to else. Again the beginning is going to change. That is beginning equal to mid plus. One beginning equal to mid plus one. So this condition is as false. Then beginning equal to mid plus one. We went here. Now in this array, only two elements are left out. Again, that condition is true. That is beginning is less than or equal to end. Yes, yes means again you have to find the mid element by adding beginning and end value. Right? That is seven plus eight, fifteen, fifteen divided by two. That is seven point five. That is equal to seven. Now. Twenty-three is the mid, right? Twenty-three is the mid now. See, twenty-three is mid now. Mid we are getting twenty-three. So twenty-three is equal to a of mid is twenty-three. Searching element is twenty-three. Twenty-three equal twenty-three. Yes, yes means mid value is assigned to yellow C. Previously it was minus one. Now, after the condition is true, the mid value is assigned to yellow C. Mid value is seven. Seven is assigned to yellow C. Go to step three. It goes here, right? Go to step three now. The yellow C is seven, right? So seven directly comes here. If seven greater than or equal to zero, condition is true. Yes, directly it prints print seven and exit. It means the searching element twenty three is located at position number seven, right? This is about the algorithm for. binary search now after understanding this binary search now we'll move on to the next part that is we'll go here the next heading is insertion An element insertion and element. This is the next heading. How to insert an element into the array? So insertion and element. But we know that insertion means inserting or adding an element into the existing array. That process we are calling it as insertion. Inserting an element into the array. When the when an element is to be inserted in a particular position, all the elements from the asked position to the last element should be shifted into the higher order positions. See, this is very important. How it works? Insertion. Our task is to We want to insert an element into the existing array. Already that array has some elements. Now we want to insert an element at a particular position, right? At that time, what happens? This process takes place when an element 
is to be inserted in a particular position how it works all the elements from the asked position to the last element should be shifted into the higher order positions it means from last element to the required position all the elements are shifted to their higher positions once you get the required position empty then you can perform the insertion operation so this we are showing with the help of an example here same example let a be an array with items 10 20 40 50 60 and 60 stored at consecutive locations these are the array elements so we know that all the array elements are be, will be stored in continuous memory locations suppose the item 30 has to be inserted at position 2 now the task is given 10 20 40 50 60 are the elements in the array now we want to insert an element 30 that we are calling it as item at position 2 how to perform that now if you observe that here in the array representation see this is the array right before insertion this is the given array existing array in this array we want to insert item that is element 30 at position 2 if you observe here the positions are A is the array, so a of zero is ten, a of one is twenty, a of two is forty, a of three is fifty, a of four is sixty. Now the task given for us is to insert the item thirty at position two here. In this position, we want to insert thirty. How to do that? For that, what we have to do is first see here, move the sixty to position five. See one empty position is there. A of five. The last element is sixty. That is at located at A of four. This element, last element, will be moved or shifted to its higher position. This is right now at A of four. Now shift this element to A of five. This position. At that time, A of four becomes empty. Then what to do? Move the number fifty to position four. Now this four is vacant. When you shift from four to five, that's sixty. Four is vacant. Now shift this three. A of three element fifty to A of four. Right now, after shifting that, now this A of three is vacant, empty. Now shift this A of two element forty to A of three. That is to its higher position. now a of 2 is empty this is the required position to insert item 30 so in this position you have to insert 30 that you have shown it here see after pushing the elements to their higher positions once you get your particular location then you have to perform the insert operation so 30 is inserted here this is the way we have inserted an element into the array so this is the array before insertion and this is the array after insertion now you have to study about the algorithm how it works see algorithm to insert An element into the array that is A is the array with n elements. A is an array name. N is number of elements. Item is the element to be inserted in the position P. Item is an element. Just in the example we have taken thirty. P is the position. In the example we have taken it as two. Right? These are the terms we are using in algorithm. A is array. N is the number of elements. Item is to be inserted. P is the Particular position. What you have done? Just we have shifted to their respective higher position from last to the 
required portion that we are writing it here in the step one for i equal to n minus one down to p. It means from last to the particular portion. That is four to two here. Four is the last element here. A of four. That is four to required portion is two like that. For i equal to n minus one down to p. Then see it. A of i plus one equal to a of i. What is a of i here? A of i is initial value. That is n minus one means four. I value is four. A of four is shifted assigned to a of five. It means in the example we have seen that the sixty was in the previously in portion number four, a of four. That will be shifted to a of four plus one. That is a of five. This is the step. A of four is assigned to A of five. Okay, right? these two are very important. I hope you understood this. Then that process goes on. All the element will be shifted up to the position two. Step one is shifted that one for loop and one assignment statement. Then once you get that position number two is empty, then this process should be done. That is, the item that thirty is assigned to a of two. P is that two in our example concerned, right? A of p equal to item means this item is assigned to a of p. It means in the first step, we have shifted all the elements a of four, a of three, a of two to their respective higher levels. Then, once we get the required portion a of two is empty, then in the step two, we are inserting that particular item at a of p, that is portion two. After insertion, the number of elements in the array will be existing elements plus one. It means the number of elements increases by one. That we are writing in step number three. That is, n is equal to n is number of elements in the array. N equal to n plus one. Previously, there were zero, one, two, three. And four, it means there are only five elements in the array before insertion. After insertion, insertion five plus one total, the six elements will be existing in the array. Then the process ends here with the exit statement. Right? This is about how to insert. An element into an array. Now, in the same way, we'll complete one more step. That is, how to delete an element from the array. This is exactly the opposite process of insertion because. This is a deletion process. What is deleting or deletion? Removal of an element from the existing array is called as deletion, right? When an element is to be deleted from a particular position, all the subsequent shift elements should be shifted into the lower order positions. It means exactly opposite process it is. In the insertion, we are shifting the elements to their higher levels but in case of deletion we are shifting the elements to their lower positions until you find the particular element to be deleted see here again this we are showing with the help of an example let a be an array with items 10 20 30 40 and 50 Sorted, uh, stored at consecutive locations. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 are yeah? stored in a continuous memory locations. Suppose now we want to remove the item 30, right? We want to delete the item 30 at position 2. How to delete? In the previous case, we have inserted the item 30 into position 2. Now the reverse process we are doing. 
we want to delete the item 30 from position number 2 from this array. This is the given array. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, EF0 to EF4, all the elements are there, right? From this, we want to delete this item 30 from position 2. How to do this? To perform that, now copy 32 item, that is item to be deleted, 30, right? Move the number 40 to position 2. Simple. You can copy this to 30. Now you have to shift this EF3 is element 40. Right? You have to move to position number 2. See that we have moved here. Position number 2. Now in the next step, move the number 50 to position number 3. The 50 is at EF4. Now after moving or after shifting this 40 to EF2, this is empty now. Shift this EF4 element 50 to EF3, right? It means the element 30 or item 30 is to be deleted from the existing array. This is before deletion. This array we are showing as after deletion. After deletion, 10, 20, 40, 50 are the existing element in the array. This we are showing with the help of, again, See here, before deletion and after deletion. Now we'll complete that with an algorithm, right? A is the array with 10 elements. Item is the element to be deleted from a particular position. P is the position. How to delete an element from the existing array? In the step one, A of P is assigned to item. A of P is assigned to item. Position is assigned to item. In the step 2, we are starting with for i equal to p to n minus 1. See, it is exactly reverse process. In case of insertion, we have started with for i equal to n minus 1 to p down to p we have taken, but here it is in increasing order. That is for i equal to p to n minus 1 from required position. The position to be deleted right from that position to n minus 1 what to do reverse process higher level elements will be shifted to its lower le levels that you shown here exactly opposite e of i plus 1 is assigned to e of i it means e of in our example e of 3 e of 3 is assigned to e of 2 e of 4 is assigned to e of 3 because p is our p is 2 Right? In this example, so 2, 2 plus 1 is 3, 3 is assigned to 2. It means 40 is moved to A of 2. Then again it goes back. It increments by 1. P becomes 4. Right? That is, P becomes 3. So 3 plus 1 is 4. 4 is assigned to E of 3. That means 50 is moved to from E of 4 to E of 3. Right? then end for. Now next time it goes it increments, the condition is false, then it goes to step number, it should be 3, not 2, it is 3, make it as 3, so in the step 3, n equal to n minus 1, it means in case of insertion, the number of elements will be increased by 1, whereas in case of this deletion operation, after deletion, the number of elements in the array will be minus 1. That's why n equal to n minus 1. Previously, there are 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements in the array. That is 10, 20, 30, 40, and 50. After deletion, only 10, 20, 40, 50. It means 4 elements will exist after deletion. It means the one element will be subtracted from that. That's why n equal to n minus 1. It decreases. The number of elements decreases after deletion. Then step number 4 will be exit. So it means in the today's class we have studied about first one of the important method that is binary search. Even based on this binary search we have practical programs also and exam point of view the algorithm of binary search is very important for five marks questions, right? And the insertion and deletion, inserting an element at a particular position and deleting an element at a particular 
from a particular portion. These two are again very important because on these two also we are writing a program it is total. In the today's class, based on this theory knowledge, we are writing three programs in the practical sessions. One on binary search, one on inserting an element, second one on deleting an element. It means all the three are very important. When you understand the concept of these three with an algorithm, it is easy to perform the practical sessions. So, in the next class, we'll start with the sorting process because searching we have completed now. Now, in the next class, we'll start with the sorting, right?